right. Thank you, everybody. Welcome, welcome, Jazz Education Network family. We are so delighted uh, to join you today for a very special webinar called Making Music Over the Internet, a live virtual jam session. And that is what you just witnessed uh, with some individuals from Berkeley. And so before I turn it over to them to talk about their research, how they uh, have created this solution uh, for their students and, and for their departments during this pandemic, I just want to say a couple quick words. If you are new to a Jazz Education Network webinar, please check us out on the internet, jazzednet.org. J-A-Z-Z-E-D-N-E-T. Most importantly, we have our uh, conference coming up, the Jazz Education Network Experience. You can see that information behind me, January 6th through 9th. It is a virtual online conference. Please check that out, same URL, jazzednet.org. Four days online, live, virtual uh, jazz performances, clinics for all ages. So enough of that. Thank you for coming here today. We are so excited to get and uh, to get to this information, to cut to the chase, we have over 400 questions we've received before this session from uh, at least that many number of registrants. We see you all watching out there. So I'm going to turn it over to Jason Camelio and have him tell you a little bit about this amazing group of musicians and uh, technological innovators that are staring at you through your screen today. Jason. Jesse, thanks for having us. Thanks to the Jazz Educators Network for creating this opportunity um, for us to, to just reach out. I hope everybody out there is healthy, you're, you're safe, you're staying creative and staying engaged. And today, what we're hoping to do is just share what you know we've been doing as musicians who are sequestered in our homes and trying to connect with our students and colleagues to play some music. Um, joining me today is my colleague, um, from the Office of Global Initiatives at Berkeley, um, bassist. Uh, he's a, he's a, a, a wizard in so many respects, um, producer and writer Ray Soul. Um, thanks for being here, Ray, and for you know, helping lead the effort here. Thank you. Um, also joining us, you know, this wouldn't be um, a Berkeley event if it wasn't for our students. Two, two. And we are so appreciative to have a, an incredible musician, um, not only uh, a fantastic drummer, but also a writer, producer herself. This is uh, Ivana Cuesta Gonzalez. Thanks, Ivana. And then, um, you know, another partner in crime, somebody who has traveled the world with us as, a, as a, an educator, as an academic instructor for our Berkeley programs all around the world, um, professor of Woodwinds at Berkeley and at Berkeley Online. Um, for those of you that take classes through Berkeley Online, uh, Jim Audrin. Thanks for being here, Jim. So, you know, um, I'm going to kick this off, and then I'm going to quickly turn it over to my colleagues to really share more about this. Um, like many of you, um, we found ourselves in March in a really tough spot. Normally, the Global Initiatives team, and, and you know, Jim and, and, and Ivana are part of this too, we're out traveling the world. We're out either, um, you know, I'm mainly a trombone player, um, but through my work at Berkeley, we're out on the road, we're visiting our global partners, we're doing programs, we're, we're reaching out into the world and engaging physically, and that was quickly cut short as everything locked down. Um, equally, on campus, it became really tough, you know, for all of our educators and students to engage. In our office, Ray and I normally get to work early in the morning and I'd be in my office practicing trombone and Ray will be in his office practicing bass or soprano saxophone these days. And um, what we would end up doing is, you know, finding some time to play together in person. It was always great. Imagine having a great bass player like Ray, you know, literally a few feet away from you. <laughs> it's really incredible. So we would play and when we went remote, we were, you know, it, there was this huge absence of just being able to work out and play together. So we began doing what many of you were doing, which is we started looking at all the different opportunities to engage online. And, um, and we struggled. We tested everything we could, all the different technology. We're, we're fortunate to have equipment in our homes that allow us to record and play. Um, but what we found is that we had to make some adjustments and some compromises and, and do some tweaking on our own. So what we're gonna share with you today is what we've done and then we were able to engage Jim and Ivana 
um, as incredible, like stellar musicians to try this with us, which um, really helped us um, to kind of not only work through the technology, but also begin to think about, we'll, we'll start to get into the discussions, how you use it. It's one thing to be able to connect and get your technology to work and to get it to be stable. But the, the more important thing for teachers and students and creators is just how you work in the environment and what the environment is like um, when you're doing a private lesson, when you're trying to do a lab or an ensemble, or if you're trying to do a, a, you know, a performance together. And so that's what we'll get into in our discussion. So, um, Ray, did you want to share? Um, I think we have uh, some presentation, yeah. but I'll turn it over to you and you can drive us from here. Cool. So before we get into like a nitty gritty part of our you know back end uh, stuff, why don't we play one more song for different styles so that people can actually see how does it work? So the first one, obviously we play slow funk version of some songs. Uh, it's coming home, baby. Um, uh, but uh, maybe second one we might just play blues, like kind of swing because sure. this is jazz education. Education Network, they might be interested in seeing like, uh, how swing sounds like it, um, you know, on, under this environment. So, uh, like we said, I guess Jim could start some melody and you can jump, gradually jump into uh, you know, the track together, kind of like that. Okay. <laughs> Thank you. 
away while ray does that i want to say thanks to everybody out there watching and uh, want to answer a question that has been asked while y'all have been performing a number of times so people notice on the stream that the audio and video are slightly out of sync so we'll yeah. explain to you how we're actually coming to you and doing this what you're hearing is the audio from the software that ray is going to show you uh today so this is a direct audio feed from the live performance software that we're using the video is video from zoom and we're patching those two things together because we thought it was at least important for you to see everybody playing um, but you know Ray and and the group here are going to talk about the limitations of this and the reality of it is that because of modern internet speeds and the type of bandwidth etc that is required to do these kind of things this is about as good as it gets right now but luckily we have these minds here who have kind of cracked the nut at least for now so i'm going to turn it back over to ray and let him explain how this is happening thank you jesse let me share my screen here okay cool can you see me this yep Cool. So yeah, thank you so much, Jesse. So that's exactly what's going on right now. That um, so audio is coming from the software, and uh, video is coming from Zoom. So uh, definitely, Zoom server is somewhere else, and audio server is somewhere else in the U.S. So that there might be a slight delay or a drastic delay. It depends on today's situation. Um, so uh, our intention is that we are going to show you everything uh like bottom line basically that what happens you know everyday basis so basically we're gonna use zoom for video most of the times and we're gonna talk through uh, the jamilus or play through jamilus that's what we do but obviously when we're looking at each other uh, through a zoom window yeah it's uh, it's not sync but it compensates whenever we play something we don't really looking at the video we're just trying to hear each other that's kind of like a bottom line but let me go over this whole thing so you should probably understand a little better. Um, so, uh, you know, so as Jason illustrated uh, in the beginning that, you know, we had some challenge and we have to research what the challenges are and how we're gonna solve that issue. And then we found that kind of some sort of solution and we start collaborating with our faculty and students to know how we're gonna use this. And then eventually we got some feedbacks from our colleagues that, okay, might be this one is better or this type of things better. So we're gonna go over step by step uh, that what was the challenge and all those that. And then after that, I will show you actual uh, the software app, the behind of those. And then Zim, Jim and uh, Ivana will talk about their experience out of um, this whole thing as a teacher, as an instructor, as a professor, and as a student. So that's our plan today. So yeah, I mean obviously I'm gonna skip this a little bit, but so how can you play together? That was first question that when pandemic started, like last March, as I, as Jason said, we play every day, trying to practice before going to actually work, start work. So that was the first question. Jason says, Ray, wow, what what we do, man? We do, we gotta play together, right? And then okay, let me let me look up something. So we both of us find out a lot of Google search. Um, you know, our criteria, search criteria was that, you know, we want to have something free because we don't want to subscribe or anything is a budget issue. And also, we want to be open source, like something is open source that we can actually modify a little bit and then easy to use so that maybe you can actually ask our students to use too. So that was our intention. And as you see, this is like a very, very, very common search result that when you actually Google how to play online, and it, it comes up like this, Jam Kazam, 
more sound jack or uh, you know even the jam taba jack audio um every everything here is really really fantastic uh you know uh, stuff that you can actually use it uh in real time situation or stagger <coughs> time situation but what we found is this so we found uh, two solutions actually first uh, something called the Jamulus by uh, Volker Fischer. He's, uh, I guess, in Europe somewhere. He's a developer of this Jamulus, which we're using right now. It is um, the client server system that um, allow people to connect uh, radius maybe around 600 mile or 700 mile ish. Uh, maybe 500 mile will be nicer, but like that radius, people can connect through this software. Uh, and then we play together. This is what we are using right now. And the second one we found was that uh, is a, something called the NINZAM. Uh, it's a novel intervallic network jamming architecture. This one was also developed um, in 2005. Jamulus also developed in 2006, which is like almost 15, 16 years ago, right? It's a long time ago. So um, the second one, uh, NINZAM, is base, basically uh, is staggered real time, meaning that uh, we have a structure and then um, the time clock that they record our performances and streaming back each other. So what you hear is basically a recorded version of someone else's track, so we can combine. So it's like a little different type of um, real time, but uh, it works for some other uh, occasions and stuff. And then we find that uh, there's a Linux server that we could probably modify a little bit and then uh, there's another one, the Amazon Web Services type of Linux server. You can, I, I will illustrate this later, but basically the first two, Jamulus and Ninjam, was the day we found. And today, uh, we actually found Ninjam first, and we tested a couple of months, and uh, so the demands that let's connect real time, so we navigate the Jamulus. So when you actually have this, and you can be able to play, but the bottom line is how we are going to use this and how we're going to install our own software, or those things are the next questions, actually. So I'm going to show you. So this is a little bit of a technical background of Jamulus that I got from um, uh, the inventor, or the, the founder of his paper, actually, that you know, whenever we play something through our microphone, our interface, it goes back to, um, goes to a cloud server we set up, and it mixed, and it it sends back to us, each one of us. So um, there's a latency, but a human ear, I guess, under 20 milliseconds is, is walkable. So right now we have a little bit of uh, latency each other, but it is okay for us to play in real time. Uh, it doesn't really bother that much, uh, but there is a latency because it's really distance and the speed of light, the situation. So this is kind of like a sketch um, of the, um, the technology itself that Basically, we send our audio signal through my computer to my interface to cloud server that we set up, and then it mixed each one of our signal and then sent back to us. So that round trip is pretty fast. That's why we can hear each other almost instantly. That is the kind of base idea of Jamulus. Um, so after that, we found that, okay, so then uh, maybe it'll work, so let's find out how we, we are going to use this with our faculty and students. So we reach out to a couple of faculty, including Jim uh, here and Ivana. So we played this through, and we found out that, you know, right now, actually, Jim, Jason, and Ivana, we are all living in New England area, which is not that far from each other. But Ivana is connected to uh, Wi-Fi, and me, Jim, and Jason, we are connected to Ethernet. So we are showing you actual like practical situation that student might don't have Wi-Fi system or I mean I mean the Ethernet cable sometimes right so and then most of them maybe don't have a fancy uh, interface so what I have is very um, okay uh, interface and everybody here like okay, we do, we don't really have a fancy fancy version of interface so it's like a really okay version of interface and then we are trying to connect together and play that was kind of our, our idea so we got together and then um, almost every other week uh, every week we just trying to play together and see what is really going on uh, when you actually play like this environments right so we found that you know there is a delay, like a natural na latency, but it's close enough to the real time. So it sometimes bothers, but our brain 
quickly our ears and brain quickly pick up those latencies so we can kind of adapt a little bit. So when you hear our performance, you know, sometimes we kind of slow down or speeding up. That's because of the nature of the latency, but we still went through, like we finished song, we started, and then we finished song, that's the beauty of this whole thing. So in order for you to actually try this, you must have this basic, basic system requirement. When you see this, you know, you, most of people have this already, like you have laptop or desktop, your Ethernet, Wi-Fi. We prefer Ethernet connection because anything you can you know, get rid of a latency, then we can do it. So Ethernet works a little better, or Wi-Fi if you have Wi-Fi. And audio interface, like Focusrite or Apozi or Yeti. Even Yeti, one of our faculty uh, at Berkeley, he used Yeti or USB microphone, meaning like a kind of fancier USB microphone. It worked. I mean, there's no packet drum whatsoever. And your instrument. And then, obviously, if you have one extra uh, microphone, then you can talk back like me. I'm using one microphone by my bass, and I also I talk through. Um, and the headphone, not earbuds, headphone, actually headphones, you can actually fully hear each other, one another. And then software, so this, this link, I'll probably, Jesse, will, I will um, send this link, everything to Jesse, so he'll probably share with you, but this is a website that Jamilus, you can download the software, it's free. And then it's open source from uh, SoundForge, so it's like, um, open community project, so everybody can actually suggest it and they can actually modify this. Um, and then uh, the Korean sweet potato. You need the I Korean love. sweet potatoes. Yeah, just, sure, yeah, my brain is too, you know. I, I'm still working through the <laughs> last <laughs> few Korean sweet potatoes. Yeah, it's just, it's and nice, it's you know, nice to have something to eat. <laughs> <laughs> Anyways, so these are basic requirements and if you want to go above, then you can go above. But yeah. this one's most likely student has this type of thing these days. Yeah, that's an interesting thing you bring up, Ray, because we were thinking about, you know, at Berkeley, all the students that come in are asked to get a laptop. It's part of their bundle. They get an interface. And we're trying to really be mindful of the basic core setup a student would have, um, at least in the Berkeley community. And then looking at all of our different partners as well. Um, it's really getting to the lowest threshold so that we can make it possible for people to not have to spend more money on their technology and still be able to connect and have a good experience. Exactly. That's the whole point. So that's why we're showing you real time, uh, like a reality, actually. It's not perfect, perfect environments, but we can get together and play safely. That is the whole, uh, whole point. So moving on. So this is the website. You could probably write it down or a screenshot um, if you're on Facebook. Uh, but we can share this one later. Um, so it has some information, and uh, obviously Jamila, so what we're using right now. By the way, you know, you are seeing the video still in Zoom, audio still from Jamila. So there's a slight delay between video and audio, and you can hear a little bit of packet drops too, but we are constantly using Jamila right now. So this is software. So I'm going to overview, like I'm going to show you what does it look like. So when you download and install, pretty easy, pretty light uh, software, 25 megabytes. And when you open this, this is what we see. This is like one server room. And this is a ca screen capture from large ensemble, but with four of us getting together, then I see Jason, I see Jim there, I see Ivana there, and then I can volume control each one of them. And then if I click something called, uh, you know, connect, or setting chat, you can actually modify your settings. Uh, it shows you some of the information about your interface and you know your buffer size, like the same as DAW at all. And you use those. You have to set up those uh, basic setup, and then your channel. One channel goes into microphone. Second channel goes into instrument, and zero buffer. Like uh, you, you find your sweet spot automatically or manually type of thing. So it, when you know about Logic or Pro Tools, this is basically what it is. It's the exact same kind of situation. And then, uh, you know, the community, for Jamila's community is huge right now. The, this is a screen capture of um, uh, the public servers you can actually use without having your own. So you see here the server name and ping time is between my server, my, my home server to actual cloud server, the how, how fast I can, uh, um, deliver my audio signal, like a latency time. So we see right now, 
our server we are using is a private server uh, that our department, myself, we developed, uh, I mean implement actually. Uh, it is about 13, 14 millisecond uh, kind of speed. But when you actually install the software and click connect button, you will see a bunch of public server you can test, basically test with. So this is the beauty because the community is already there and especially European countries uh, in England and France, they have like a weekly jam session even. Um, so there's a lot of, uh, and the Facebook has a group too. You can have information, questions. So we are what we are doing is actually is already, already out there. We just bring it in and kind of customize what we use. Um, so right now, uh, kind of wrapping up for um, the Jamila system kind of part, one thing I, you know, before I hand it over uh, to Jim, I want to explain a little bit about the whole system that, um, you know, the basically um, our intention, our goal is to connect. And even though screw open hybrid or online only, we should use um, this type of little system, which is free, uh, to create a um, virtual ensemble room for 24-7. And then, honestly speaking, uh, if you know a little bit of coding background or Linux server background, you can actually do it yourself. Um, so what I did was I created uh, four or five different server using different location. And then uh, we can add that information to the back end of Jamulus so that my Jamulus, my server Jamulus, show me the list of my own server so that if I share the URL with our student, they can actually see available spots, available, let's say, room, so that who's in there, and then there's an empty room, they can just click and get in and then play together. That is the idea. Uh, but unfortunately, this one's real time. It has to be near uh, five, six, maybe maximum 800 radius mile, mileage radius. But we played, Jason, remember that we played one from someone in, in Toronto, right? I mean, it was okay. Well, we even played with Jesse in, in, in right. Rwanda. That was incredible because, Jesse, you're, I think, you're at least 1,200 miles away from us. Yes. Which was incredible. And so, you know, there, there's, we've really stretched the system. Again, as you said, Ray, it's free. It's got, um, you know, kind of a core technology need that most students and teachers might have. And, you know, um, with a little extra knowledge and learning about how to set up a server, just, you know, even after using the public servers, you can actually set up your own virtual practice room. Exactly. And, you know, as I said, there's a community out there already, and they have tons of information about this. But the bottom line is their information is also very customized to someone who wrote that instruction. So Jason and I and our team, what we're doing is we're kind of decoding that kind of uh, very uh, technical word to kind of human word. <laughs> <laughs> right. So that everybody can understand. So we have like a manual. Yeah. We even create a, um, a couple of weeks of a class that I can, we can actually show this to uh, our student or our faculty and then how to actually do it, you know, like uh, using... There's tons of free uh, servers, uh, service servers available, so you can use those, one of those, and create your own. So when you have, you know, uh, mind and you want to do it, then it is is easy. It's not that difficult. That's what I want to say. So next one, I also want to uh, toss this information to Jim. That as a faculty, you know, um, there's a might be the way to utilize this system, uh, especially Jamilus, uh, the real time one, and he, this one is to his observation or perspective on uh, how to utilize this whole system. So Jim, uh, give it away. Um, you can take over. Cool, Ray. Great. Thank you, Ray. Um, amazing uh, software, amazing experience to be here. Um, I came, like uh, Ivana, I came from uh, Berkeley in Boston teaching live ensembles and teaching performance studies courses and also private lessons in the woodwind department. And um, it was a shock. Uh, all we had was Zoom meetings. And those of you that have tried to do this on Zoom realize that the audio cuts out, can't, they cannot accommodate uh, interaction uh, at this level, this degree. Um, so 
I was very interested to find out, is it possible to regain some of this interaction that occurs in a live playing situation between musicians, especially in the, the genre, the jazz genre, where a lot of improv improvisation takes place. We need to interact, especially with time. And um, the other thing is the audio quality, which is really not bad in Jamulus. Um, we, we spend all this time working on our tone, our intonation, our sound, and all those kinds of things. And they kind of go out, out the window as soon as we <laughs> try to play on Zoom, gone. You know, it's like, man, I've been working on this. It doesn't sound like me. I'm disappointed. Um, so this captures and brings into a room that we share um, pretty well. There are some things um, that happen. And as musicians, we have to accommodate them. So we should talk a little bit about that. Um, the last thing we played was the blues. I played the head. Um, I'm not a math major, <laughs> but I, I know we played the in head faster than we played the out head, and, um, <laughs> which is always good. It's better than the other way because then you can't make it. You know, it's like, oh gosh, why did I play this thing so fast? Now it picked up. How am I going to get out of it? But um, no, it's, it did slow down, but there are reasons that this happens. So I just thought it would be useful to you if I described what it's like to me to play this and try to deal with it. Um, so as it, was, it, it happened to me gradually while we were playing was, you have to realize, what I'm hearing is the other instruments. I hear myself live because of the nature of my instrument, so it's live. I know Ivana hears herself live and so does Ray. Jay, you got an amp going, right? You have an amp? Yeah, here, okay, so you can hear yourself live. So there's this thing where you hear yourself live, but then you hear the other instruments, and you heard um, Ray allude to something called packet or packet drop. What happens is when we start cranking, when we start playing, get excited, and maybe play a little bit louder, uh, we start pushing the envelope of the software especially with regard to our own uh, internet setup, microphone, analog digital converter, that type of thing, and how, how, what's the integrity of the, uh, the actual internet connection that we have. Pretty good. I mean, we're able to actually play, but these things happen. So then um, <laughs> I have kind of the rep of like, okay, um, all right, so these things happen to us. <laughs> what can we do about it? I'm not going to sit here and take this. I'm not going to sit here and slow down. It's like, man, all right, so let's see. How about if we, hmm, how about if we back off a little bit and don't play quite so heavy, but still with the intensity and try playing a little bit. You guys up for a little up-tempo? We, like we did yesterday, Let's crank it up a little bit. Yep. So maybe, uh, what do you think about minority changes? You know, the, um, uh, the tune minority, a very common uh, jazz tune. So you guys up for a little bit of playing? Is it cool? All right, all right, so um, why don't we crank a little bit? We'll do it, we did a bit of this yesterday. And just so you can see what happens, but Sorry, this is my reverb. Um, so what I want to do is, is I want to see if we can maintain. I'm not going to play the head or anything. I'll just play a little bit on it. But I'm going to back off. I'm going to leave some space. And I can hear in my headphones when I'm pushing Jamulus. And so I'm going to just ease off a little bit, leave some more space than I normally would, but see if we can kind of keep a tempo for a few choruses. So here we go. So, no head, just right on a kit. Cool. So, you can jump right in, I'll join you. Cool.
Um, to me, that's like a lot of fun. Um, <laughs> it, it, so I really like, <laughs> it's like a rush, you know? It's like a rush, it's like, oh wow, you actually play a tune, play a jazz. And I'd leave a little more space, and I imagine by now you can hear the packets. Ivana, you can hear it too, right? <laughs> right, and so I hear it, mm, I'm hitting the top limit, of it, so I back off. So, one of the, the academic parts of this is that I have to play, it's kind of like playing the room. You know, you play so many concerts in different venues, you're playing jazz, and you're thrust into these venues. It could be as many as 10,000 people, it could be 100 people. And um, the sound is always different, it's a surprise. So this is a skill really you need to be able to have to be able to communicate. So rather than let, I mean, it would be easy to say, look, this is not a live experience for me. Um, so I give up. I'm just going to wait until this whole thing is over. I'm going to get back together with my friends. But instead, I mean, if you think about it, just work at it a little bit. You can kind of get this thing to work and have these experiences that don't replace live playing, but kind of give you a taste of it. And maybe now that you have it, you know how to work with it, you can do some things with it. Um, among those uh, would be anything. I mean, any types of uh, options as an educator. Uh, I could play, I t when I'm teaching woodwind classes, a lot of times I'll teach things by year. So private instruction one-on-one, I'll play things, I'll play a segment of something, and the student will play it back, and then I'll string several segments together, and it will form into uh, maybe a, an improvisation, a solo, for example, on rhythm changes. And uh, in so doing, I'll do, depending upon the student, I'll focus upon certain maybe harmonic or rhythmic elements, uh, things like dynamics, accents, the impact that those have on time feel, that kind of thing. So that's one thing you could do in private instruction. What you're seeing here is something you could do in the context of a jazz ensemble, uh, which is you can work with everybody, say, hey, let's try this, let's expand this a little bit, why don't you, let's back off, let's push, really push here, and see what happens. Um, one, ex <laughs> I'm sorry. Uh, one of the exercises I do with uh, one uh, with my ensembles is to take a 32 bar song form, and I'll say, okay, first bar, uh, quarter note equals 40. And that's actually much slower than my heart rate, right? So I mean, <laughs> it's barely going, right? <laughs> so I'm like, man, all right, got to swing at 40. And um, there's, I learned stuff from um, concert wind ensemble, all the Italian um, things, the way they express musical expressions. But uh, poco a poco, little by little, accelerando, which is to go slightly faster. <laughs> I never did this with you, <laughs> okay. Ivana. I never did this with you. Thank God you didn't end up in this ensemble, Ivana. Um, so we would go like really slow, but, but I, I would first test, what's your fastest tempo? And a lot of times I work with real high level student players, and they go, yeah, yeah, well, we'll show you, Jim. So, you know, they rip out like 360, you know, so it's cool, man. So now we go, we start at 40, I say, okay, you have to do this gradually. You have to look at each other, and you have to do a real steady ramp, smooth up, poco a poco, accelerando. And when you hit bar 17, halfway through the tune, you better be at 360. And then from bar 17 to bar 32, the end, is the opposite, gradual slowdown. And great players, right away, it's like, okay, you have to communicate, you have to do these things. And it ends up where they have to interact. Mm -hmm. And it's a really nice exercise. So that'd be something you could do with an ensemble sort of pulls everybody together, and it's a thing that can be accomplished in this particular context, you know, in the, yeah. w without stretching the limits of the software. And then the other thing, that, oh, I have a class where 10 students perform individually, then duets, and then bands. 
um, that would be a thing that we could do virtually here, um, their own music. And the other one is lecture, playing classes, playing segments of solos, listening to original recordings, uh, studying the harmony that's used in it. So that's a larger class. I noticed she didn't uh, put 15. It would be tough to fit 15 <laughs> in a jamless session, man. But uh, anyway, uh, you can start to get sort of the idea of some things you can do with this if you're willing to work with it. Sorry, I didn't mean to go on so long. <laughs> oh, that's, that's really good information, actually. Um, I mean, you're going to actually turn it over to Ivana about student experience. Before that, you know, uh, the fact that we are showing real time, like everyday kind of um, situation, that it is, there's a packet drop and there's drops, and even we speak right now, it is a little bit slight, um, the drop, but this is what it is. We're using lowest budget budgeted system possible right. for, for everyday people. So server we're using in, in Manhattan right now is like a $9 per month server, which is like the lowest possible key server. But it still works. And uh, Ivana will speak, but Ivana doesn't have the Ethernet. Most of the students doesn't have the Ethernet, but three of us have, so it compensates a little bit of the speed and everything. So it's a combination of, you know, um, Stop. And also weather, if the ready waiting outside and a little more delay or packet drop, but still okay to talk and pay. So this is things that uh, give us a lot of idea, like how we're going to use this. Um, Ivana, so, you know, on your perspective as a student, uh, as a drummer actually also, um, what do you think? Like, when you, would you share something, your own experience with our viewers today? We're close to microphone a little, little bit more. Yeah. Yeah. Wait, give me a second. I'm just going to update a little bit. Okay. <laughs> Better now? Yep. Okay, perfect. Uh, yeah, so first of all, thank you, you know, <laughs> for inviting me to this. It's, a, it's really cool to hang with this guy. Um, after I actually work, I have to come here and play with this guy. So I have to say that's really fun. Um, for me, the first time, I have to say, it, it wasn't like uh, the best experience because I, I didn't know too much and then it was like, I was like, wait, I'm kind of confused because why the bass is not playing on time? But it wasn't you, right? <laughs> That's what I know. Um, so, of course, the first one, I think it was the hardest, you know, the first time that we played. Um, to this program, but uh, I was noticing that then I start to learn how to, you know, how to work with this situation. And it's like, okay, what should I do? So the music, because at the end, the important thing is like the music has to sound the best as possible. So I was like, okay, how can I do that? So um, I, I have to say, as a drummer, it made me think. Um, I don't want to say like play less, but like just like thinking a little bit more every time that I'm going to approach something in my drum. Um, with the time, the time, the time, the time. Uh, I think if you just keep it like this, it doesn't matter what you hear and someone is behind or in front of you, <laughs> you just do it. Yeah. <laughs> but that helped me. Because I need to focus 100% when I play, you know. Oh. I haven't fun, but at the same time, it's like, actually listen more than before. I mean, I, you know, sometimes we just play and blah, 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 blah. blah. But, but I think this time, it's like, wait, I need to listen what everyone is doing. So I can, you know, I don't, I don't want to just like say it was the, pro the program, the problem, you know, when I probably was me. Um, I think something else that I have to say was really good is also the with the older technology part and um, I mean you know not everyone for example that goes to Berkeley actually studies something with um, you know that you need to deal with interface microphone all that kind of stuff I think this it helped you to understand the basic stuff for me actually helped me to like how gonna how I gonna set up my microphone for example in the way that everyone is going to be listening uh, better next time. So uh, it made me like experiment in my own house, like, wait, I want to like, 
I think Jason told me something like, wait, I can hear just one one sigh, I don't know why. So then it's like, okay, let me figure out what can I do. <laughs> so I have to say that that's, uh, that's really good too. Um, yeah, I mean, you know, it's never gonna be the same, but I think it's a really good tool, um, private lesson. I think it should be much better with this, actually. Um, because when we actually play in duo, it was perfect yesterday. So we also figured out that, like, oh, okay, if we play in duo, actually, I was hearing you with me all the time. Mm, um, yeah. The weather, I noticed, is like today it's really windy outside. So mm. Sometimes, probably, I don't know, something happened. Yeah. <laughs> probably one of the cables moved. I don't know. <laughs> um, but that's life, you know. That's yeah. life, right? Yeah. <laughs> but for me, I think it, it trying to make me more a, a better listener. You know, just listen a better. That's really good. Uh, that you know, when you really want to focus something intensely, that that's why we need a Korean uh, sweet. You know, you know, it gives you energy. It keeps moving. I'm a big fan of Korean sympathy. So, anyways, this is like our our um, demonstration. But I think we need to probably take some Q and A, and maybe you can play one more, uh, something like that. But um, any questions? Uh, so, by the way, you know, if you have any. Thing after this session, uh, our Jesse has our information. Then we can we willing to actually show you the server and uh, how we're gonna set up and this information we gather. We have like actually some document that we can share with you guys. Also, said based on our uh, research uh, over the past seven months uh, or eight months. Um, so let us know if we need any help, um, and uh, we take maybe Q and A, Jesse. Great, thank you, Ray. Yes, we will, if you registered for this session, excuse me, we will send follow-up uh, in hopefully 24 hours with a recording of the session and also links to the documents that Ray just mentioned. We gotta record the music again. <laughs> <laughs> uh, yeah, so let's do a little bit of Q&A. We had a lot of session uh, questions coming over in the chat and also a lot of questions from before the session started. So uh, the first one is, uh, Ray, would you mind sharing just your Jamulus set settings with everyone? Sure, yeah. So hold on one second. So right now I'm in the room, so I cannot share the outside, but I can share with you how does it look like at this point. So I'm seeing this, do you see this? Let me hold them and share my screen one more time. Okay. Yes, and we see that. Yep. So this is my Jamulus right now. So when I speak, so left, left, far left, this is my um, my over control, like uh, my mixer. And also I see myself here, uh, Super Ken, this is me. It's important to have your own name. Uh, and J.O., uh, Jason, and Jesse for the broadcast this, and the uh, Dominica Republic. Yeah, so this is my setting, and then uh, we have reverb, very basic reverb, and pan, left and right pan. Um, yeah, and you know, so um, just just nothing fancy sure. about this. Is like very very simple, you know, setting that you can actually bring it guitar down, guitar up. So, and then the settings, you know, I'm using Duet. I put it duet. I uh, used I bought used to one uh, almost seven years ago. Still works great. And then it shows me my ping time is ten millisecond be uh, between me and our server in New York City, which is great, you know. And so yeah, this is my setup right now. Um, does it help or anything? Thank you very much. Uh, so a couple questions just about like the the latency issue uh two in general about how far apart are you all right now in miles well i think the interesting thing is it's not we're all in around the boston and rhode island area but the actual cloud server ray this one is this one in new york yeah we're? manhattan manhattan yeah so we have a basically a cloud server in new york so the question is how far are we away from the server and, you know, as you're watching me here 
in Zoom in the video, you can tell that my voice is like much more close to the video response. There's very, very little lag because of that. Yeah, like we could actually all clap, right? <laughs> and do a clap test. Probably, yeah, right? Exactly. <laughs> if you look at each other in Zoom <laughs> and try to clap, you'll be off. But if you just use your headsets yeah, and listen place. to each other and clap, you'll be in time. And Jesse, you're... I'm you're, in Florida. You're like in Florida. So when you talk, there's some packet drop, but your internet connectivity is really solid. Yeah, yeah and so, I'm also streaming the session. Yeah, yeah. yeah I mean, your, your machine is, your bandwidth is really getting sucked up. So um, which, that's, I think, why, Ivana, with you being on Wi Fi, it's working so well is, you know, you're in the Boston area, there's, you know, good connectivity in the city. We're all connected down in New York, and then it's that, that round trip of the latency is from our homes or our apartments down in New York and back. Jim is outside of Providence. It was a great movie, by the way. Um, <laughs> <laughs> Ray, do you know that movie? I don't know. Oh, we got to get you hip to that movie. That's a great movie. Yeah. Um, but I think that's, you know, it's, it's really the distance from where you're connecting with your machine to the server. But we can explain city to city. So I'm I'm in uh, 30 minutes west from Boston. Mm -hmm. I was able to play with someone in Toronto, Washington D.C., and where is it? Uh, PEI, Prince Edward Island right. in Canada, which is like 16, 17 hours drive. Right. So it technically five is more than 500 mile, uh, but it was. It's not perfect, but it's okay to play. I was able to play my bass, my electric bass, actually, play my bass, and then he play guitar and sing. So I would say safely 500 mileage uh, from, let's say, from New York City to uh, Washington, D.C., Virginia type. But somehow it worked me between Toronto and PEI. So it really depends on the speed of your computer and also you know, latency, router internet speed or something like that. And so, when you started doing this, were you first hosting your own server, like on your native computer, before you decided to? No, um, the old one that we did, actually. But I don't want to open my router to the internet world. So security, and these days, a lot of people can do many things. So that's why we navigate uh, the option to open our own uh, cloud server, which was a little bit challenging that. There's not many detailed instruction how to do that, but uh, I don't know if how many of you remember DOS, the OS system, the DOS PC world, like like 30 years ago, 40 years ago. There's DOS, the D -I -R Linux, yeah, DOS, P. yeah, DOS, um, yeah, and <laughs> yeah, exactly, That's a DOS command, yeah, exactly, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and if you know Linux. It's similar to those, like, you know, it's all language, like a command, typing a command. So luckily, I'm that generation. And then my background is a little bit Linux. So if that instruction, I can tweak a little bit, and I can be able to actually install, and I create a step-by-step uh, -step installation. But that's why we safe set up like a server uh, in order for us to safe protect ourselves. Uh, so right now, our server is not going to be on the public list, so no one knows where we are, unless we share our IP address or uh, URL. Here's a question from the feed that just came over. What buffer settings are you using? Are you using the auto buffer settings, or have you found a sweet spot for your no, settings? That's a really good question. Someone's, someone I'm using, a, yeah, I'm using auto. To, you know, I'm, I'm an auto person. I just leave it. Um, I think Ray, you're you're like a you're more a manual person. Yeah, I used to. Right now, I just put auto uh, because there was a packet drop, anyways. Yep. But I use five to five, local five, server five, and then start from there. We just drastically move up and down. You will see a lot of bubbly sound. So you probably find your Swiss, but moving those two line here. Right now, it's three to three automatically but for me my sweet spot was five and five and Walter uh, one of our faculty was like seven and six it really depends but if you are Wi-Fi then forget it uh, you, you, you can but Ethernet you might try to use manually to find sweet spot me was five five 
Thank you. There's a lot of questions about Jamulus and Jam Kazam, and I know you tested all of these platforms out. Uh, I don't know how long the explanation might be, but perhaps you could briefly talk about maybe just the difference between those two or maybe include Jack Trip because those are the big three that people are talking about, but maybe why you settled on this and how you feel about those other two specifically. Were they, were they, were they functional for you and you know, sure. a little bit of information on how on your journey, on your research. Yeah, Jason might be uh, can help help us too. But uh, for me, we studied obviously the first line was Jam Kazem, like uh, the first Google search was Jam Kazem. We download software. It's an amazing tool, it, and basically it's easy to use everything. But the, for me, um, because I don't have server control. Uh, so that uh, you know, I could actually create something my own. There was a little bit of limitation, and also sometimes it was perfect connection with someone else there. And it has a great feature of you know, using uh, creating your own room and invite your friends, everything. But overall connection, it was sometimes working and sometimes not. So it's, there's a fluctuation every single day. Every day is different. So that's why it wasn't for me. It wasn't reliable enough. But many people use it these days. Uh, you know, I, I know my friends using Jem Kazem, uh, and he says it's great. So it really depends on your system, and if you have like a fast internet, or Wi-Fi, uh, Ethernet, and the system's good, and those things. And Jack, I mean, all of uh, something called a Jack, like when you say Jack in there, that's um, relatively, uh, safely speaking, is more of a peer-to-peer -peer connection. Meaning that uh, me and Jason we, we connect one another. Like uh, you know, remember Napster? Yeah. Like uh, you, I share my sh data through Napster, and you download my file right away. That kind of uh, idea is not exactly, but it's peer to peer. So that I connect you, you connect me. I open my router, you open your router, we connect. That's the idea of uh, Jack. Something you say Jack uh, uh, is uh, is I understand that way. Uh, but um, one like this, I mean, jack, sound jack and jack audio, something jack, you can actually still set up your own private server or somewhere. Basically, we are buying third-party computer in somewhere to open their router. That's the idea, right? So it doesn't need to be peer-to-peer. -peer, but for me, Jam, Kazem, and Ninjam, we found a Ninjam, and Ninjam, one of the clients called Jam Taba. I contacted the software developer of Jam Taba. He's an, he's an amazing piano player, uh, Jesus, um, in, in Brazil. He, he developed this Jam Taba thing, it's, which is amazing software that is not real time, like a real, actual real time, but it's staggered real time, very clean uh, sound quality, and there's a lot of good feature, like looping. Uh, let me quickly probably show you how does it look like. Um, so this one is the initial platform that we've been using for, you know, first couple months, I think. Right. Yeah. So this is basically the map. A lot of people are using it these days. So this is Jam, Jam Taba. Uh, you hear probably echo because of it coming through. See my signal moving. Yeah, so this is the one. Then you see a lot of empty rooms here. This is our private We're, we're not server. seeing, uh, Ray, you'll have to switch the screen share. Oh, yeah. okay. You don't see it now? No, we don't. don't so you have to just switch yep. it over. Yeah, I think one of the things that was interesting, oh, yeah, look at all the rooms, right? Yeah. So it's just like, it. right. Yeah, so this is like a public, there are a lot of public server room. One thing we did, Jason and me, is that I create, we create a bunch of our private server, too. So then you create URL, something says, you know, jam with Ray or something yeah. like that. So people can connect. But uh, this one is great because its audio quality is absolutely amazing. And because there's no latency, they use latency. Uh, and then there's a feature like looping, recording, multi-track recording. By the way, Jamulus can also, you can record multi-track through the server. But this is a gem tower we find out, uh, which is amazing software too, based on Ninjam uh, gear. Other stuff, fancy one, like you have to use your own interface. I mean, the, you have to buy some interface or the network gear that you install. But it's, our goal is to save time. <laughs> yeah, we were, you know, we were really conscious of our global partners around the world and the idea that our partners have students that are all studying remotely. And is there a way that we could help them, you know, understanding the limits with their budget, uh, the limits with their, um, their connectivity, and, um, 
And, and what we found is that um, we needed to get to the lowest threshold. Uh, and so the lowest threshold for us was was trying to connect, um, you know, basic computer setup. Could we do it on Wi-Fi? Um, and could we give them a private space that they could connect to 24/7? And what happened, Jesse, is we, we needed to we needed to get under the hood. We needed to customize because we couldn't be there all the time. And but we wanted to like create the space and then give the keys to the students and the teachers. And that's where. Um, Thankfully, you know, a lot of problem solving, you know, with Ray and uh, J.O. and Ivana and others came into play. Um, we were able to kind of like just hammer at this. Like we, we spent, you know, uh, quite a bit of time just getting in the rooms, pressure testing what's going on, tweaking, and then turning it over to our colleagues and letting them feed back to us and, and, and tell us how they're doing, what kinds of equipment, equipment that they were using. We've, we literally had... Um, we had the dean of the performance division at Berkeley, Ron Savage, <laughs> sitting in his dining room with a snare drum and a hi-hat and some brushes, only using the microphone on his laptop and the speaker on his laptop. He wasn't even, even using headset right. or anything else playing with us. Yeah. So um, we got down to that lowest bare-bones threshold of nice. connectivity so that you could actually work with somebody musically. And um, these, these really simple, arguably simple, pieces of software that are free ended up working out really well for us. So um, that's where, you know, we are today, and, and we're just, you know, happy to be able to connect. <laughs> and thank you for sharing with us as well. And I think something that you're saying is so important, which is that this solution with Jamulus and being able to have your own <laughs> server and create the rooms that students can go into at any time right. is the reason why you chose this because it fits your needs the best. So, you know, that's an important message because what Ray is saying is, look, you know, you guys have tried so many of these solutions and many of them work really well. Some of them have features that Jamulus doesn't have that an educator or a group of students or musicians might find are the reasons that they choose that particular piece of software. So, you know, as you're searching out there for the right solution for you, you know, this, this one here may not be for everybody, uh, but it's just a demonstration of what's possible. And we hope that this has inspired you and perhaps given you some information to go forth and start experimenting. I think you guys are going to play one more tune. Yeah, um, before we do that, I really want a huge thank you for the actual the founder of this uh, Volker Fisher. I haven't, met, I never met him, but I, maybe he got a lot of credit. Uh, I really want him to, you know, say I want to say thank you that he actually initiated this a long time ago. But right now, he has some community, so that uh, we can actually be able to use. So I want to, I want to send you Korean Swiss potato <laughs> a box of them yeah, man. to your country. Okay. I can promise that tomorrow we'll send out an email with all the information from the session. Uh, I don't know if we have enough Korean sweet potatoes to send some to everybody via email. But uh, maybe the next time we can all get together at a Jazz Education Network conference in the flesh, Ray will come bearing gifts. Yes. All right. Well, thanks to everyone for joining us. We're going to let the group say their last few words. Thank you to Jason, Jim, Ivana, and Ray and to the Berkeley Global Partners Initiatives and also the Berkeley Music School. Uh, we hope to see you at our conference. Check us out at jazzednet.org. We'd love to hear you play us out. You want to play record me, J.O.? record me. Cool. You cats ready? Yep. <laughs>